name is Megan Jenkinson and I've been a photographer for a number of years. I currently teach at the Elam School of Fine Arts in Auckland. I work with a lot of different themes because I'm not interested in just sticking to one particular type of practice. Essentially I'm just the work that I do <clears throat> evolves out of some sort of need to deal with a subject and so those subjects vary from um, perhaps the dealing with moral virtues, as in the virtue series, to um, ecological issues with the Antarctica series. And um, each body of work I feel is a self-contained unit, although there are common threads that often run through different bodies of work. Uh, I use a digital camera and go straight, take those images straight into the computer, and then um, usually bring in other images or whatever seems to be necessary, but as well as combining different images, I'm also using various um, tools that Photoshop has to offer to bring about a quality in the, in the image. For instance, in the Aurora, it was a matter of trying to convey something which is very um, uh, ephemeral. I've, I've never actually seen an Aurora, so I'm just trying to imagine what they would look like. I've read plenty of descriptions of auroras, which is what inspired me to make the series. When I was in Antarctica, I made use of the wonderful library at Scott Base, where there are, you know, it's just a very small room, but full of everything relating to Antarctica, which included, of course, um, the diaries of early explorers, such as Sir Robert Falcon Scott and Edward Wilson, and people like them. So, and, and those diaries are full of d descriptions of Aurora, which sounded just so incredibly tantalizing. And it was something that I'd really wanted to somehow photograph, but of course, being there in the summer, um, although these, these auroras might be occurring, you can't actually see them, of course, because you have to have darkness. So um, I suppose an example of um, how I would use photography to convey something which can't be visualized is by um, taking a landscape that I'd taken in Antarctica um, and then creating it, um, creating a nighttime scene by darkening the sky and then bringing in curtain-like forms because auroras are often described as being curtains. And so although I wasn't there to actually see them, I could still nevertheless, when I get back to my studio, um, create that aurora. The Atmospheric Optics series also um, deals with this phenomenon which is um, visual aberrations or um, things that appear to exist but in fact aren't substantial in the way that we usually think of things being substantial. So um, mirages are optical phenomenon just as um, auroras are as well. Another related series is called The Certain Islands and this features um, a series of islands in a, in a sea, so they're essentially seascapes with an island and because of the process that I've used, which is a lenticular print process, the island appears and then as you move past the image it disappears. And it's very strange to think about mirages as being um, something which occurs in cold places because you tend to think about them as happening in desert environments. However, I was amazed to see in Antarctica almost daily the shifting of forms and um, so I wanted to give um, some sort of visualisation to that. I think even a straight photogra photograph is constructed. Um, however, I suppose that um, with my work I just tend to find a means of achieving an end and so if I can't see in the real world what I want to photograph it's a matter of putting together different elements to um, to make that thing that I want to see or show visually so um, my early photography um, tended to involve using scissors and cutting out different photographs and putting them together into a collage and um, but in those days I wanted to reveal the different layers that made up the image. I didn't want to disguise the fact that these things were um, brought together from different places. In other words, I wanted to reveal the artifice. Um, but then since 
digital technology has become so prevalent and so good, uh, it was a matter of really finding my way into a new medium, still using photography of course, but then looking for advantages that digital imaging could bring to the image. And I find that there are plenty of things that um, I can do now that I could never have done before. I think if you're a young person exploring art, um, just one of the good processes you can use is just to follow your nose, just to not necessarily um, sort of close yourself to the sorts of things that you look at and the practice that you, you do, but just to, to have a fairly open mind. I think that um, you know, be open to different influences and to trying things out, to experimenting and being bold. Um, there is often a conflict that um, occurs between the work that you have to do for school and um, the sorts of things that you might want to do, So, um, which may not perhaps mean that you you submit that those ideas for your final presentations, but um, if you can just perhaps keep your own ideas going in a workbook or through sketches and you may see that you have some sort of parallel art practice that you nurture yourself which um, is perhaps the one that's truer to yourself rather than the one that you are um, required to do for, for your school practice. And certainly if you are thinking of applying for an art school it those other ideas that you yourself have that are going to be the important ones.